Hello again, everyone. You're joining us for another episode of Executive Platform's Blueprint Podcast Series. My name is Jeff Mix. I'm head of content and research. My guest today is Satish Tiramuthi of UC Boss. Uh, I've had the pleasure of speaking with a number of his colleagues over the years on this uh, channel. This is the first time I get to speak with the Chief Strategy Officer. I'm so looking forward to this conversation. Thank you so much for joining me today. Thanks for having me, Jeff. Why don't we start off by talking about some of the things that you're hearing from the industry in terms mm -hmm. of uh, supply chain working hard to fulfill its objectives. I, I think there is definitely a sense that uh, you know resiliency is a thing companies are still struggling with, delivering some of the values that supply chain is supposed to bring to an organization. What are some of the things that the industry is coming to you with? Post-pandemic, uh, what has typically happened is uh, with disruptions becoming the new normal, uh, the industries are trying to find solutions to enable uh, supply chain resiliency and at the same time have improved efficiency in terms of managing the supply chain. I feel like we've been talking about resiliency for a couple of years now. Yeah. Clearly, there are some common stumbling blocks that they're, they're really still struggling with. Yeah. Um, what are some of the ones that you want to highlight for us? A few specific aspects uh, in that sense would be uh, managing excess inventory, uh, managing supply shortage as well on the other side of the spectrum. And there are uh, recurring delays in terms of uh, manufacturing as well as fulfillment. Uh, these are, you know, some of the primary uh, aspects, I would say, uh, which are, in fact, uh, hindering the progress towards achieving that resiliency that uh, the organizations would need uh, in managing supply chain. Now, when I hear those, I think yeah. maybe the common factor would be we should have good data on all of that. I mean, all of that is a, a yeah. metric that you should be able to measure. I can only imagine data analytics right now is having an exciting time, especially yeah. for companies like UC Boss. How is UC Boss helping its clients address some of these uh, concerns? Very valid point, uh, Jeff. In terms of data, uh, that's going to be the fulcrum of what I'm going to talk about next. Uh, UC Boss, uh, being a zero code, 100% zero code platform, uh, has various offerings uh, on its platform. So, which is building out applications at ease, at scale, and at speed, uh, and also it has prepackaged applications. And uh, the most important thing about UC Boss is it has uh, a unified uh, data model. Uh, from a supply chain standpoint. And also it allows to orchestrate business processes on the data that's gonna converge on UC Boss from disparate systems that would be available in the ecosystem. So would I be right in saying, if I'm a supply chain executive and my concern is, am I spending too much on inventory or am I not setting aside enough inventory to meet uh, the needs of an age of disruption? Yep. I can bring in UC Boss and start feeding in data from different things and asking it questions. Is that sort of what Absolutely. we're talking about? Okay. So going one uh, notch above, uh, we just spoke about data and how the data operates on the platform. Mm -hmm. Now, going one notch above, uh, in conjunction with the question that you just asked, is uh, scenario planning. Okay. Okay. Uh, whether to actually stock more uh, to mitigate any risks uh, that could be coming in, uh, typical of what we saw during the pandemic, or uh, should I move into a different inventory strategy itself? Or should I look at uh, various ways of doing my demand forecasting? So what are those scenarios that I could run and you know arrive at some results that's going to inform me in terms of taking the right decision? And this is the advantage of a, a no code solution because rather than figuring out how to ask the question, mm -hmm. you have to think what are the right questions to ask. Absolutely, so when you say uh, no code, yeah, it is actually zero code, uh, so we do not want to mix with no code versus uh, zero code. Uh, we can talk about that in a bit. Uh, but what zero code enables is, see, the need of the hour is to have a solution or a platform. Uh, if the organizations are looking at meeting the supply chain objectives that we spoke a while ago, right, in terms of resiliency, the visibility, uh, improved efficiency, the traceability, depending on various industry verticals, you will have different flavors of objectives, right? So these are sort of overarching objectives for any supply chain organization. Mm -hmm. uh, so that is where uh, UC Boss as a 100% zero code platform uh, is going to enable a solution that you are looking for to meet an objective 10x faster. Mm -hmm. So that is the power of zero code, right? Uh, offering that solution it's not going to act in silos. It's going to integrate with your upstream. It is going to integrate with your downstream. It is going to integrate with your midstream. So it's going to be a comprehensive solution and a platform for you to realize the tangible business outcome. 
And this is also something that uh, integrates well with existing systems because no one Absolutely. is no one is starting from square one here. It's a, it's a matter of getting the existing tools to talk to each other better. Absolutely. So now this question sort of creates a segue for me to talk about uh, specific offerings that we have on UC Boss as a platform. Please. Right. Uh, today, uh, so we have sort of uh, recasted the whole model in terms of the portfolio of offerings. So we have four different offerings. Uh, one is what we call as uh, IPaaS. It is Integration Platform as a Service. Uh, then we have uh, APaaS, which is Application Platform as a Service. Then there is SEM Pass, uh, offering prepackaged solutions catering to the SEM business function. And there is a fourth one, what we call as AI Pass. So with these four offerings, the first one that I spoke about is the integration platform as a service. So that is a through and through plug and play composable integration platform. So when you bring in UC Boss into an ecosystem where you are looking to achieve the supply chain business objectives by building out solutions or you know, bringing in various data from disparate sources and orchestrating a specific business process, it cannot act in silo. Right. So that has to integrate with your existing systems. So that is where this IPaaS as an offering comes into picture. So that is a fully composable plug and play integration. Terrific. So, yeah. and I know um, we talked a little bit about this just before the interview started. I have had the pleasure of speaking with some of your colleagues yeah. in the past, and I can't help but get the sense UC Boss has been on this trajectory for a decade now. There, there are companies that are getting into data analytics of the current generation now, and I feel like you're one of the early innovators Absolutely. that have built step by step. Without asking you to give us a history lesson, could you tell us a little bit about your story? Yeah. Uh, the genesis of uh, UC Boss uh, is something like this. So wherein, uh, while working with the various clients, uh, running different ERP systems on SEM systems in particular, uh, there was always a need to really look at uh, data convergence and how we could really make use of the data and orchestrate various business processes, which may or may not be part of the prepackaged applications that are available in the current ecosystem that any of the organizations are running with. So that's where the whole idea of uh, you know building out a platform, uh, which is truly no code, uh, so that we reduce the technical debt. As we speak, the one other critical element that I want to highlight is organizations taking in UC Boss today uh, will have zero technical debt. Mm. What that means is, I spoke about APaaS, which is Application Platform as a Service, or be it IPaaS also. It is all completely composable. Uh, you know, drag and drop, plug and play, sort of an approach to build out solutions. From that standpoint, there is zero technical debt in terms of any code that needs to be maintained, uh, which, you know, historically has been the way to build out solutions, right? But this is, I'm, what I'm talking about is enterprise grade. It's not about a simple workflow or achieving a specific function within the overall business function. Here, what we are talking about, a massive supply chain unified data model, so that's going to help orchestrate various business processes, build out applications in a completely zero code way, right? So that's where we are today. Now, going back to the genesis, that's how we started, as I mentioned, as a convergence platform. As uh, years went by, uh, based on the knowledge and the experience that we had around supply chain, so we started to build that unified data model that I'm talking about and also carved out various offerings. We also brought in uh, AI infused into the platform as of today. So there is a platform which offers AI-based elements on the platter for people to take in and model solutions which are AI-based. So that's where we are today. And, and I think that's definitely the uh, the topic of the moment. Everybody wants to understand what AI can bring to their supply chains. Yeah. And of course, you have a, a series of robust offerings that are a decade of, of progress already built in, and now this AI piece is being brought in on top of it. Um, where do you think this tool is going to go? Like, how, how much is this going to continue to scale and help supply chain executives address their concerns? Yeah. As we speak in this year of 2024, uh, the problems have been uh, in place as an outcome of the recent pandemic that we all had seen, right? And the disruptions that continue to exist and prevail. 
the organizations having gone through this should make themselves future ready mm-hmm. and the time is now to uh, recast their overall uh, technology strategy uh, the application strategy and for that matter the overall IT strategy itself of course uh, organizations have invested in specific ERP applications tier 1 tier 2 whatever the case may be but looking from a mid to long term standpoint without losing the investment but still you would want to enhance for sure the ERP products are evolving to cater to the needs of the organizations but the need of the hour is how soon can we do that how quickly can we do that so you see a platform like UC boss within the ecosystem is going to enable solutions at scale at speed and at ease right in a matter of few weeks the disruptions could be anything tomorrow mm-hmm. right which we may or may not be able to predict but bringing in a system like uc boss will help organizations to be future ready mitigate the risks in terms of what could be the vagaries in the business marketplace by means of building out solutions that they think will be needed or they need at this point in time and also quickly i wonder if we could illustrate what we're talking about with a specific example now of course you don't need to mention a client by name mm. but maybe you could walk us through an example where uh, a company has said we have these disparate tools that are not talking to each other. We want our data all in one place so that we can ask it intelligent questions. What did getting started look like? How long did it take them to get it up and running? Walk us through their story. Yeah. So one of the clients uh, primarily operating in the uh, supply chain space, uh, uh, providing of, uh, I would say, a 5PL consulting as well. Uh, So they had uh, an issue in terms of uh, managing excess inventory. Uh, So what they typically do is, uh, so they buy for their customers, uh, but if the customers are not in a position to use that inventory that has been procured for them, uh, for their manufacturing units, they sort of, you know, resell into the open market. So they were able to uh, run this uh, manually for a while. Uh, They did have uh, tier one, tier two ERP systems, but managing such sort of an inventory was outside the purview of the feature functions that were made available in a packaged application. So they were trying all ways and means to find a solution uh, for about a year or so. So that's when uh, they stumbled upon UC Boss and we presented our solution. So then we went into a design thinking session and uh, the solution was out in about six weeks. Wow. I wonder if we could circle back to, um, I misspoke earlier. You, you, you may remember I said uh, no code, and you said actually I think you meant zero code. Um, for people who are listening to this who may be a little confused themselves, there's low or zero code and no code, no code and these are yeah. different things. Yeah. Walk us through what that is. So typically an ecosystem that prevails as of today, what we call as the LC, NC ecosystem that is low code, no code ecosystem. So wherein uh, there are certain offerings wherein a little bit of a coding is necessary to deliver a tangible solution. Hence, they fall within the low code spectrum. And uh, the other side of the spectrum is no code. Uh, No code is by uh, theory, it is all done by drag and drop of feature functions provided by the platform to actually stitch those things together and deliver a tangible solution with zero piece of code being written. Okay. Right. But if you look at what differentiates a zero code from a no code is uh, from a data model standpoint, uh, the rigidity is there in a no code platform. Whereas from a zero code standpoint, the data model that is offered by the zero code platform like UC Boss in this case uh, is totally flexible. Uh, the customers can take in, uh, use that, model that, tweak that, and build a solution on top of that to their liking or to their needs. So that is the flexibility that Zero Code offers, and it is fully composable, right? And the other dimension is you can build applications that are enterprise grade. It is not about a simple workflow. Of course, the no-code platforms have come into existence to really deliver quick solutions, uh, uh, you know, quick workflow within a particular business function in an organization. But if you're looking at uh, delivering solutions to the challenge that we were just talking about, that's where the zero code technology comes in. So why we call it zero code and not long, no code uh, with very, very thin line of, uh, you know, uh, a difference, uh, so to speak, uh, from a uh, literally speaking standpoint, 
but th there is a huge difference. The difference is you can take in the data model, which is already built in. You can, you know, compose solutions that are enterprise grade. Uh, you know, you can orchestrate solutions. You know, have those integrate with your enterprise grade solution that may be available in your ecosystem. So that's what makes this platform different from a no code, and hence it is called as zero code. If that answers your question, I think it does. I think it, it's the difference between uh, putting together a picture with Lego pieces yeah. that someone has given you the pieces and said, "Oh, you can put them in any order you want," or giving you a paintbrush yeah. and you can put the color wherever you want it to go. It, it's freedom. Yeah. I, I I see the difference now. So thank you. Sure. <laughs> um, we have covered a lot of ground in this conversation. Mm -hmm. If there were one or two key takeaways you wanted to highlight for people and have them think about a little further, what would you want to uh, have them go away from this episode with? So I would say. Uh, uh, two things. Uh, one is, uh, of course, uh, you know, there are, uh, you know, senior folks running the supply chain business function. Uh, the reason I'm picking up supply chain is that's where this platform is focused on currently to deliver the required solutions. So for those uh, a set of uh, uh, people, uh, they definitely will have challenges in terms of uh, achieving the business objectives. And the options are aplenty. Uh, in terms of going in and buying a specific product which delivers to a specific solution, say, for example, on the planning side of the house or for that matter, um, say, manufacturing or manufacturing execution for that matter. I would suggest rather than looking at individual products for the individual needs, so look at a platform so that is going to deliver the solutions that you will need across business functions at speed, mm -hmm. at speed, that's the key. And that's going to help you in your continuous journey as you embark to mitigate risks, you know, defeat the vagaries of the marketplace. And hence, you will be in a position to build that kind of a resiliency, regardless of what's happening in the external world, and thereby improving the supply chain efficiency. That's number one. Number two would be for the organizations uh, that think that they already have enough investment that has gone in and they are in a position that they are able to meet the critical objectives of managing the supply chain. Even in that case, what I would suggest is if they have artificial intelligence as part of their agenda, right? So rather than investing in uh, uh, people or processes or the tools for that matter, Again, bring in a platform like UC Boss, which as part of its offerings also has AI infused with a platform that's going to give everything on a platter, along with prepackaged solutions, be it predicting lead time or uh, having uh, demand forecasting, or for that matter, looking at dynamic slotting in a warehouse. So we have prepackaged solutions as well. The second thing is for people to look at the AI element and how they could really leverage with a platform like UC Boss. I think one of my big takeaways from this, and again, I've spoken with you now and, and several of your colleagues, every time I speak to UC Boss, it, I'm just blown away with the breadth of the options. Yeah. Uh, and every company has its own challenges, its own unique circumstances. I can't possibly ask every question that they're going to have. So for anyone who's listening to this who may have questions of their own, want to learn more, yeah. what is the best way to get in touch? So I would say the best way would be to visit our website, uh, which is ucboss.com. Uh, there, there is enough literature in terms of our offerings, uh, enough literature in terms of our success stories, enough literature in terms of the problems that we solve. So basis that if there are any questions, uh, we will be happy to answer and get in touch with uh, Absolutely. anybody who's asking the question. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, I encourage everyone to visit that uh, website. It, I think it is a great resource. I've gone through it a few times myself. Um, Thank you so much for your time today. This has been great. Thank you, Jeff. Thanks for having me. It was a wonderful discussion. <laughs> You've been listening to another episode of Executive Platform's Blueprint Podcast Series. I've been Jeff Mix. Let's do it again soon.